नमस्कार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी डायरेक्ट एलाइजा एंड इनडायरेक्ट एलाइजा व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस टू प्लीज रेफर टू आवर अर्लियर क्लास ऑन एलाइजा आज यू नो एलाइजा इज एंजाइम लिंक्ड इम्यूनो सर्वेंट आसे वेयर एंजाइम इज लिंक्ड टू द एंटीबॉडी that antibody reacts with the antigen if antigen is present or antigen reacts with antibody if antibody is present and we take one antibody conjugated enzyme and that enzyme converts a substrate to a product the product is color from the color we can say the antigen is present or antigen is absent okay that is qualitative and from the intensity of the color from the optical density we can also quantify the amount of antigen or antibody present in the sample so quantitative so if we if you refer to our earlier class then we have discussed the principle of elisa what are the enzymes we use what are the substrates we use with respect to the enzyme and what color is produced that we have already discussed then today we are going to focus on the direct elisa and indirect elisa i will tell you what is direct and why it is called direct why it is called indirect so basically there is antigen and antibody reaction so we call it as an immuno sorbent acid and second is enzyme is linked and enzyme is linked to the antibody so if the antigen is in contact with the antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme that is called direct that means the enzyme conjugated with the antibody is in direct contact with the antigen so it is direct and the enzyme conjugated antibody this is the enzyme conjugated this is the enzyme conjugated antibody that is not in direct contact that is in contact with the antigen through another antibody so we call it as indirect this is the basic difference what is the difference antigen is in direct contact with the antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme antigen is not in direct contact with the uh, antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme here the antigen is in contact with the antibody conjugated with the enzyme through another antibody so the first antibody to which antigen is uh, contacted that is called primary or first degree antibody primary antibody then to this primary antibody the, we have the secondary antibody which binds which is conjugated with the enzyme so it is called indirect this is the basic difference between direct and indirect and once the enzyme conjugated antibody is bound that means when it will bind when there is antigen if antigen is there then then only the enzyme conjugated antibody will bind and in this case either antigen is present or we can have the antibody in the sample which will be which will be treated here as the primary antibody then if we have another antibody specific to this primary antibody or the antibody present in the sample which is conjugated with the enzyme then we can analyze the presence of this antibody so in direct elisa we usually detect antigen and in indirect elisa we usually detect antibody this is the antibody in the sample we can also detect the antigen and if we are detecting the antigen then we have to use one primary on conjugated antibody followed by secondary conjugated and antibody enzyme conjugated antibody so let us see what what is there in direct and an indirect 
and we have also discussed why washing is required why surface blocking is required all these things in the in our first class surface blocking is required for all these things now let us see we have also discussed qualitative and quantitative elisa what are the samples what are the advantages what are the applications please refer to our last class on elisa so direct elisa we call it as direct elisa because the antigen is in direct contact with the antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme so it detects the antigen so this antigen is nothing but the antigen present in the sample to which we have used one antibody conjugated with the enzyme so this is direct contact between the antigen in the sample and the antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme so this is called direct elisa single step one antibody or we can say the primary antibody is used so the test procedure we will take the acetate acetate is the micro titer plate consisting of mostly polystyrene and this this plate is made up of such material that antigen or antibody can bind so we will take the sample which is maintained with pbs buffer pbs buffer we use because it provides the environment similar to that of the serum the ph ionic concentration everything will be same as that of the blood or serum so the sample or the serum we have to add so if our sample contains antigen then that antigen will be coated on the plate surface of the acetate plate or the micro titer plate then we have to wash with pbs buffer because if any unbound antigen is there that will be removed then we have to surface block because next step is addition of the antibody if any surface will uh, be available then that antibody can bind so to prevent that uh, binding of antibody with the acetate we have to block the surface and to block the surface we have already discussed uh, this in our uh, last class where to block the surface we can use non reactive proteins which will not react with in either antigen or antibody only block the surface so we can call it a surface blocking and mostly we use bovine serum albumin bsa so once we add it uh, or uh, once we block it then again we will wash it to remove any uh, unwanted thing or any blocking agent everything will be washed away then we will add the antibody conjugated with the enzyme and enzyme mostly use uh, use this horse radish phosphatase or alkaline phosphatase so these two uh, enzymes mostly are used and horse uh, horse uh, horse hrp is horse red radish uh, peroxidase and alp is alkaline phosphatase horse radish peroxidase and accordingly we we use mostly in case of uh, horse radish peroxidase we use uh, h2o2 or opd and in alkaline phosphatase we use the substrate like pnpp so once we add this uh, antibody conjugated with enzyme then we will wash if excess uh, uh, antibody is there then we will add the substrate that substrate will be converted to colored product if the antigen is present in the sample that means if the sample contains the antigen then only this antibody will antibody will combine with the antigen that means this enzyme is available if enzyme is available uh, that is hrp or alp whatever we have taken the accordingly the specific substrate we will use and then colored product so colored product means antigen is present sample is positive if there is no color change then sample is negative antigen is absent so this is direct direct uh, elisa advantage it is fast simple one step one step 
and disadvantage is it is less specific okay because only one antibody we are taking so for that sandwich elisa is there so in the next class we will study about the sandwich elisa indirect elisa it can detect both antigen as well as antibody mostly we use it for antibody detection so in the same example of uh, direct elisa suppose here we use uh, one antibody so antigen then if we use antibody which is not conjugated with the enzyme so this will be the primary antibody then we will use another antibody which is conjugated with the enzyme we call it as the secondary antibody so this becomes indirect so this this will be indirect one okay so in this way we we can detect the antigen so let us uh, take one example of antibody detection so that means the sample we have taken has the antibody suppose say hiv so hiv virus is the antigen and uh, the antibody developed against hiv is present in the blood sample of that patient the aids patient so suppose we are detecting that so that will be indirect elisa so first we have to uh, coat the surface with the antigen say hiv then we will add the sample that will be uh, treated as the primary antibody then we will add another antibody which can bind with this uh, antibody specific to hiv present in the sample which is conjugated with the enzyme so this is indirect here it is the antigen and here is the antibody conjugated with the enzyme so indirect indirect indirectly indirectly there is contact so no direct contact so we call it as indirect elisa then we can the same, we have the same procedure we will add a substrate uh, which will co be converted to a colored product from the color we can say uh, presence or absence and if we want to quantify also from the intensity we can quantify so here uh, we will take a ready made plate coated with the antigen suppose hiv it is ready made plate coated with hiv virus we will also it, this ready made plate is also blocked with bsa so that uh, it will not inter, uh, react with uh, um, any antigen or antibody we will wash it with phosphate buffer saline then we will add the sample or serum containing the antibody prepared with pbs so the antibody will uh, react or bind with the coated antigen and this antibody we call it as the primary antibody then we will wash now we will add the antibody conjugated with enzyme we call it as secondary antibody so if there is presence of antibody in, in our sample if antibody is present in our sample that means this antibody is already bound to the coated antigen and that means this antibody conjugated with the enzyme will now bind to this primary antibody so after washing if you add the substrate the list of substrate enzyme and the color change we have already described in our last class so you can refer so when we add the substrate there will be either a colored product or there will be no color change so if it is a colored product that means antibody is present sample is positive if there is no color change then antibody is absent and the sample is negative so what is the advantage of direct elisa amplification amplification is the advantage because we are using a secondary antibody so it is uh, uh, more accurate we can say the disadvantage of uh, uh, the indirect there is a less specific so here it can be more specific and uh, 
the only disadvantage is it has the potential for cross reactivity caused by secondary antibodies so this is all about the difference between direct laser and indirect laser thank you